You're listening to Country First with John Gomez. And welcome back to Country First on Long Island's only country station, 96.1. The best in country music and the best in talk about our country. Our special guest is chairman of the Town of Islip Republican Party, uh, Frank Tantone. Frank, welcome aboard. How are you? I'm good, John. How are you? You know, the, the last time you were on, it was in the middle of the uh, the battle. Uh, campaign season was up and running. You you had a great battle to fight. You know, of course, the Phil Nolan machine, if you will. Uh, and uh, you took him on with a virtually unknown person. You know, Tom Croce was not a, a, a political figure. Uh, you had to quickly groom him. Uh, and then uh, set them off. You, you must have had a strategy, Frank. Let's let's talk about. Well, first of all, folks, uh, the victory. We've got Tom Croce as supervisor. We've got all four council members now. We've got Bergen. We've got Flotteren. Now we have Cochran and Sempt. You've got the receiver Correct. of taxes. Correct. You've got um, also the town clerk. That's correct. You've got the entire slate. Has this ever happened before in the in the history of the town of Islip? Yes, actually, it was uh, town of Islip has always been a Republican town, if you will. Uh, but a couple of years ago, we had some internal issues in the Republican Party, and we got caught in a weak moment, and that's how we got Phil Nolan. Now, speak briefly. I mean, obviously, you're alluding to the Pete McGowan years. Yes. How do you overcome that? I, I mean, we out in Nassau County, they had the Margiata problem. You have the Galata problem. Then you come over here, you've got the Pete McGowan issue. Then you've got Crookhaven, Brookhaven, Powell. A lot of, you know, as a, as a lifelong Republican, parents Republican, you can only take so many hits and say, hey, wait a minute. Are we with, you know, are we with a bad team or did we just get a bad apple? A number of years ago, uh, three three years ago or so in the Islip Republican Committee, we realized we had hit rock bottom at that point. We had no seats on, uh, no elected officials. The party was broke. Uh, the leaders were in it just for themselves. And fortunately, there was a group of five, there were a group of six of us who had had enough. And the answer to your question is you need to clean your own house first. You need to work hard, and I know that sounds like a cliche, but that's the formula. Well, okay, so so here you have McGowan getting you know uh, indicted, convicted. He's off to jail. You at the time, you weren't the party leader at the time, were you? No. Okay. No. So how do you how does that happen? I mean, okay, he's ousted. How do you how how do you clean? You know, what's the first step? What do you we, do? We we tried to make a a peaceful transition, if you will, and asked leadership to step aside and let some new leadership come in and, and clean things up, so to speak. They At first, there was uh, obviously some refusal to do that. Uh, we did everything. We were relentless. We held, uh, you know, rallies and protests in front of Republican headquarters. We, we, you know, we went to conventions. We made ourselves very visible. We recruited people to be on our side. And eventually, as the momentum grew, uh, there was so much momentum that eventually leadership changed hands. So, so you instead of forming some other kind of party or some, you know, third or fourth or sixth party system, you said, "Listen, I'm a Republican. We're part of the GOP. It's time to, you know, clean house, as you say." And eventually, you did it. That's correct. And that, that's how you would recommend it, too. I mean, why? I mean, what do you think? You know, now that we're on this, you know, uh, this issue, what do you think about cross endorsements of with like the Independence Party, the Conservative Party, Republican Party? Does it weaken the bigger parties? Does it? I, I, I believe and, and uh, you know, we have cross endorsed other candidates. Our candidates have been cross endorsed. But from the beginning, my philosophy was to put forth Republican candidates who were so strong that the, the third parties had no real choice but to go with our guys. But also to be fair, that if the third parties, for instance, Anthony Semp, had someone who was so outstanding, we had to keep in mind that we were looking for the best possible person. And as long as their ideology was was relatively consistent with ours, their party affiliation shouldn't be such a big deal at that well, point. Well, certainly a conservative philosophy is generally consistent with the Republican philosophy. That's generally. Usually, yes. Yeah. So but but then the Independence Party, I don't you know, I don't even know what their philosophy is, actually. 
we we uh, were very fortunate to have an Independence Party candidate for district court judge this year, and we were comfortable with him because he had been a Republican. We spoke to him about his views, and, and his ideology was very consistent with ours, and so we were very comfortable in cross-endorsing him. And perhaps here, due to, as we were talking about, Pete McGowan years, Powell years, you might get disenfranchised. You might say, you know what? I'm sick of this party. You know, I, you know, the party's not representing me anymore. Where else can I go? And I don't think many people realize that you can be a blank. Like when I went right. into broadcasting, I was basically told you can't be, you know, a registered Republican. I mean, you can think the way you want to think. I mean, that's impossible, for, you know, to change for me. But you know, if you're just a blank, then it's like, hey, listen, I'm I'm neutral, and I'm going to look at things, you know, objectively. Correct. But unfortunately, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to be an Independence Party member, and that means I'm independent. Right. Ah. Right. Uh, <laughs> ding, we, ding. we had a number of disenfranchised Republicans. When I became the leader, I had countless stories of I wanted to come down here and be a Republican. And and it was kind of the old boys network. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere else. Since I've become the leader, that's not the case anymore. We have more people coming in the door than going out. Is that right? That's yes. a good sign. No question. Now, is this because of your recent well, let, let, hold hold a thought, we go to a break. Let's get into some specifics about this recent race, a slow of uh, just an incredible win streak here and uh, turning Islip around. Sure. Folks, uh, we're here with uh, Chairman Tantone, uh, the chairman of the town of Islip Republican Party. Uh, we'll be back with more right after this. Mm-hmm. 